Most of my software development was done in assembly language on North Star or MicroComplex DOS. I wrote around 35 utilities and extensions to the operating system. This one is typical. I named it TTT, which stands for Transfer, Translate, Transform. In operation, it is similar to PIP, CPM's Peripheral Interchange Program. You specify an input file, a destination file or device, and one or more options separated by the slash character. Various options provided for filtering the file contents, converting character case, expanding tabs, numbering lines, removing line numbers, etc. I used it a lot to expand freeform assembly language files to a formatted output similar to that produced by the macro assembler. I'll demonstrate that option. Here is a program which is a little more fun. A popular mathematical recreation in the 1970s was the Game of Life devised by the British mathematician John Horton Conway. The game involves creating an initial pattern and seeing how it evolves according to a set of rules which I will discuss in a minute. My program starts out in a pattern design screen using 40 column display mode. You move the cursor around on the screen and deposit markers to establish a pattern which you can save to a disk file. You can also display a directory listing of save patterns. I'll load a simple pattern and let it run. Imagine a checkerboard with an infinite number of rows and columns. Each square on the board is a cell, which can be alive, designated by a dot on the screen, or dead, designated by the absence of a dot. Each cell has eight neighbors, including those on the diagonal. In each generation, four possible transitions can occur. Any live cell with less than two neighbors dies, as if by underpopulation. Any live cell with two or three neighbors lives on to the next generation. Any live cell with more than three neighbors dies, as if by overcrowding. And finally, any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors becomes a live cell, as if by reproduction. All transitions occur simultaneously. The screen is updated and the next generation begins. I can change the rate at which the screen is updated and I can also single step the display with a spacebar. I'll load and run another pattern. But of course my checkerboard is not infinite. It is 48 by 48 cells, but that's enough for useful experimentation. My video card allows for only character graphics, so I use 24 lines and 48 columns and display two cells in each graphic character, one at the top and one at the bottom. This requires four graphic characters to cover the four possibilities. I use the ASCII blank character for both cells dead and the ASCII period character for one live cell at the bottom of the character. I created two custom graphic characters for the other two combinations and included those in custom character generator ROMs that I burned. One is the mirror image of the period. The other has two dots, much like the ASCII colon, but with more space between the dots. Some patterns cycle and appear to move. This one is called a spaceship.
This pattern produces gliders which move across the screen until they collide and produce stable patterns. I think that's enough of the life simulation. Let's move on. I wrote my own full screen editor to take advantage of the memory mapped video card in my system. I first disassembled Alan Ashley's editor and used much of his logic for my editor. I used inverse video to generate a true cursor and then added single keystroke commands to page forward and backward through the file. Control characters were added to move the video cursor around on the screen. I implemented delete and insert functions. I also added commands to insert blank lines in the file. and to delete entire lines. I added a help command to display the seldom used but powerful string oriented commands to search and replace, define and move blocks, execute command macros, etc. I think that's enough on the editor and let's go on to some other utilities. Everybody wrote a dump program. Here is mine, which dumps the contents of a file in both hex and ASCII. I also developed a debug utility which used memory mapped video I.O. to provide a dynamic display of a program in execution. This debug utility recognized and supported the 10 undocumented 8085 instructions and flags which I used in some of my programming. The top five lines of the screen displayed the program counter the accumulator, register pairs B, C, D, E, and H, L, the stack pointer, and flags. The contents of the memory location pointed to by register pairs was also displayed, as was a 16-byte memory window. I included a help panel to provide reminders of the various commands. I'll load a short demo program and set the starting address of the memory window to point to the data area in my program. I will set a breakpoint and begin execution at the entry point of the program. and single step a few instructions using the space bar. If you watch the second line of the display, you can see the instruction which has executed and observe its interaction with registers and flags. The next two instructions are among the 10 undocumented 8085 instructions. D sub subtracts BC from HL 
leaving the result in HL and setting flags. Store HNL Indirect stores the contents of HL at the location contained in the DE register pair. Otherwise, my program was pretty similar to other debug programs, so I won't spend much time on it. My extensions to DOS provided I.O. redirection. This included a procedure file processor, which I named PROC. I'll run my test suite while I describe it. A procedure file provides input to DOS or to an application program running under DOS. It allows parametric substitution similar to an MS-DOS batch file. PROC provided 10 dynamic parameters, 10 16-bit variables, and 5 file information variables. It included arithmetic and logical statements, much like a basic interpreter, to allow testing and branching within a procedure file. Procedures could read and write to memory locations and also perform port I.O. Procedure files could call other procedure files and return or simply link to them. And procedures could be executed from a 1K memory buffer or could be entirely resident on disk. I wrote a macro-based language, which I called Mac85. I'll demonstrate this by assembling a disk-based disassembler program, which I converted from a very long basic program I used. I use a procedure file to get things started. It takes a little while before output appears on the screen, which will give me a little time to describe how it works. Mac 85 is implemented using three levels of macro expansion and dozens of library files. The lowest level provides extensions to the 8080 instruction repertoire and defines linkage to the operating system and library routines. The middle level defines data type declarations and support for various structures such as arrays, stacks, trees, lists, strings, records, and file control blocks. The highest level processes the MAC85 language, which provides statements similar to BASIC or FORTRAN. MAC85 supports the following data types, Boolean, Byte, Word, 16-bit integer, long integer, which are 7 bytes in length, real, which are 5 bytes in length using the North Star floating point format, and pointers. Up to three-dimensional arrays are supported for each data type. Variable length strings and arrays of strings are also allowed. Sequential and random disk I.O. is supported. Hardware support for my printer and several video modes are included. We're starting to see some output now. I have suppressed macro expansion listing so only the program statements are being shown. But even so, the listing is quite long and I will only show a representative portion.